The government's aggressive push for higher ethanol blending in petrol is a cause of concern as well as a moment of celebration. What started as a green initiative to cut emissions and save on oil imports is now also raising red flags among vehicle owners and experts. With the blend already at 20% and plans to hike it to 27%, questions are now mounting. Could this spell disaster designed for pure petrol? Let's find out. Hi, my name is Sanket Upadhyay and you are watching me on The Federal. India's ethanol blending journey began modestly back in 2003 under the Ethanol Blended Petrol Program. Initially, pilots aimed for gradual integration, but by 2018, the national policy on biofuels set a 10% target by 2022. This was achieved ahead of schedule in June 2022, thanks to the initiatives and incentives like fixed pricing for ethanol, diversified feedstocks from sugarcane and grains, and upgrades by oil companies. Encouraged, the government then advanced the 20% goal to 2030, rolling out E20 compatible vehicles from April 2023 and ensuring nationwide availability of this ethanol blended fuel. Now, India hit that mark early in 2025, five years ahead of its target, celebrating savings in foreign exchange and reduced carbon dioxide emissions. But now the ambition surges to 27% blending, with norms expected very soon. The government touts this as a step towards energy self-reliance, reducing crude oil imports, boosting farmer incomes and cutting pollution. Blending has jumped from 1.53% in 2014 to 20% today, saving 1.4 lakh crore rupees in foreign exchange by substituting 238 lakh metric tons of crude oil. It's also slashed carbon dioxide emissions by 717 lakh metric tons and has paid about 1.2 lakh crore rupees to the farmers. Aligning with the Atmanirbhar Bharat and net zero goal by 2070, it's meant to diversify energy, support agriculture and lower vehicular emissions like carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. Yet, beneath the green glow, doubts simmer. Ethanol blended petrol like E10 and E20 isn't always engine friendly, especially in vehicles designed for pure petrol. Ethanol's basic nature is that it absorbs water from the air and can cause phase separation where the fuel splits leading to poor combustion, stalling and hard starts, particularly in cold weather due to higher heat of vaporization. Its corrosiveness attacks rubber seals, gaskets, plastic lines and fiberglass tanks, causing leaks, hardening and failures. For older engines like those in cars from 2020, just four to five years old, this means potential corrosion, injector clogs, overheating, engine knock, carbon deposits, rough idling, and even reduced power. Even in engines built for blends like flex fuel or post-2023 petrol models, issues linger. Ethanol's 30 to 34% lower energy density means mileage drops. By some estimates, 3 to 5% for E10 and up to 7 to 10% for E20. Drivers face fewer kilometers per liter, higher consumption offsetting the ecological gains. Long-term carbon buildup causes hesitation, inefficiency and slight emission hikes if untuned. In humid India, water absorption risks storage issues and separation. Experts recommend additives and maintenance, but is that enough as we eye 27%? I have been noticing that the mileage has gone significantly down, it has come down to around 9. Uh, this, after reading uh, about ethanol blending, I came to know that this might be one of the reasons of the mileage uh, of the car going down. Heavily, this has also affected my budget because initially I was uh, spending around 10,000 a month uh, for petrol of my car, but now it has gone up to 15,000. A survey has also been done. It spoke to about 36,000 respondents on petrol vehicles. These are petrol vehicle owners located in 315 districts of India. Take a look at the findings. A question was asked, 
if you have a vehicle that was purchased in 2022 or years prior, how much has the fuel efficiency of your vehicle reduced in 2025 as compared to the years prior? There were 11% who said that their fuel efficiency has gone down by over 20%. 22% of the respondents felt that the fuel efficiency has gone down between 15 to 20%. 10 to 15% fuel efficiency down 11%. 14% people said that their efficiency has gone down by 5 to 10%. And a vast majority, which is 22%, felt that they cannot notice any change or they cannot say. Another question was asked, on the usage of E20, that is ethanol blended petrol, if that petrol in vehicles not designed for it reduces fuel efficiency and increases wear and tear of the vehicle. The question was, do you support the government mandate to only sell E20 petrol or should it be revised? Of the 14,127 respondents, 12% said that yes, they support the government. 44% said that no, I oppose it and it should be revoked. 22% felt that no, I oppose the current mandate but will support if consumer is given options and price incentives. Again, 22% said that they can't say anything. To understand the risks better, we spoke with renowned auto expert Tutu Dhawan. Here is what he had to say. Well, honestly speaking, <coughs> there are two versions of ethanol blending yes one is the economy part of it and it has got a little better auction rating but on the other it has some negatives also by reducing performance of the engine to a not to a very substantial amount minor uh, reduction and of course the fuel consumption also goes up a little bit but the government stands firm addressing these concerns head on Officials assure that new vehicles are E20 ready with plans for engine modifications via agencies like ARAI for higher blends. Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri highlighted the success of 20% blending, emphasizing reduced imports and environmental wins. The government argues that benefits like energy security, farmer support and lower pollution outweigh the risks with flex fuel technology and incentives ensuring a smooth transition. The policy, the government says, is backed by consultations and aims for 30% by 2030. In a tweet by the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, it said, some articles and reports in the media have raised concerns about the potential negative impact of 20% ethanol blending, E20, in petrol. Uh, it has listed out uh, what it calls is its justification. Critics, however, question if older vehicles are being left behind, which basically means... That is this initiative by the government going to leave a lot of engines stalled and a lot of customers suffering? But on the other hand, uh, being a cheaper alternate to fuel, it should reduce the cost of the petrol which the German general public uses. And <coughs> the, the obviously the cost, uh, the profits have to be passed on to the general public, but Obvious, they are not done so. There are <coughs> some other minor negatives uh, in uh, ethanol which contains a little bit of moisture. And if the vehicle is in constant use, it really doesn't matter. But once used and the vehicle not being used and kept away for a long period can damage the internal combustion uh, part of the petrol engine. As India accelerates towards higher blends, the road ahead looks bumpy. Will the savings justify the potential engine woes? Well, that is going to be the billion dollar question or the billion rupee question. Thank you very much for watching this broadcast.